Hi, I'm David. And I'm Rachel. And welcome to Leisure Bit. And today we're covering off a year since we've had the van. A year. A year. Or just over a year, isn't it now? We picked it up on the 8th of January 2022. We placed the order for it in September 2020. Well, it's great to have a van anniversary. It's been brilliant. It's been a great year. Really, yeah. really good year. Yeah. I can't believe it's gone so quick. It has gone really quick. When we look back though, we've done a heck of a lot in that time. We've had 75 nights away at over 55 different locations, which has been brilliant. What was your favourite, Rachel? It's so difficult to pick a favourite. I've enjoyed all of the different ones, yeah. but I've enjoyed Northumberland, I love the Lake District. There's only been one that I haven't enjoyed really, so <laughs> no, it's been brilliant. What about you? exactly the same uh, you know we've had some fantastic adventures and experiences and it's been absolutely brilliant it's probably exceeded expectations in terms of what we've done with it but anyway let's get on we wanted to say about the van and what we'll try and do is keep it specific on as it came from the factory versus any mods and things we've added because it obviously changes you at your experience if you do make changes to it first thing in terms of the van i think it's a uh, quite a practical size sometimes you wish you had one a little bit smaller sometimes you wish you had one a little bit bigger but i think for what's fitted in the van it does really well if you drop down a size i think you'd struggle to get a kind of a shower and a toilet and cookers and that sort of things in i'm sure it's possible to do one of the key deciding factors when we got this uh, particular model was the fact that it's got the, the, the two bench seats here that you can pull together into a bed or you can have it as two singles. So as far as the layout goes, I think we got it pretty much spot on. Really pleased with that. And I think um, Eldis have done a cracking job on the size and the layout. Very, very practical layout for two people. It's got the two belted seats in the front, doesn't have any belted seats in the back, and sleeping arrangements are for two people. So in the future, if we looked at other vans, I think this is the kind of layout that, that, that works for us. Well, it's been just over a year since we got the van and our anniversary. So let's take a quick look and see what we've done in that time and give you a quick tour of the van quick view of the cab so we've got 4881 miles on the clock uh, we've got the Avtex 2 sat nav this is really useful uh, which is gives you the speed when you're going along we've got the next base dash cam which is new and we've got the Garmin one I originally fitted we've got the rear view mirror there um, all of those have been really useful. Uh, the only reason from changing from the Garmin to the next base one is the next base films in 4K, so I can use it as basically for driving footage in the videos rather than having to have a separate camera for that one. Other than that, in the cab area, pretty much as standard, it's the nine speed auto box, and well, that's pretty much it. We've also got finally the tyre pressure monitor, which you've probably seen on there. My only comment on that one is that sometimes there's a nut behind the valves on the wheel and sometimes that becomes a little bit stuck so it's worth having a pair of kind of mole grips or something like that in the van just in case you do need to blow the tyres up and it has got stuck. Not ideal, I'm sure the guys will improve that at some point in the future. Got the wind deflectors here as well uh, which are quite handy in the summer. I think that's everything in the cab. Oh, not forgetting, we've got our lights up here, which light the cab up and are super helpful, especially if you've got the chair swivel round or if you're looking for something in the cab. We have, of course, got the newly fitted blind spot detection pieces there. Just give you a look at those. One there, one at the other side. If we just knock the ignition on, see the light up, just do it again. And basically when anyone's at the left or right of you, it just reminds you in case you go to pull out to overtake. So there's a tour of the cab. So now we've looked in the front and you can see you can turn the cab seat round. And just kind of rotate it, just lift the handle up at the side and then you can move it round. 
Um, the only thing to comment, even with my big long legs, you can dangle a little bit at the front here. Uh, one of the things fitted was the door handle, just makes it easier to open and shut. And also we've got this, this, and a couple at the other end, just to stop this plastic coming away. So over at the other side, we've got the fridge and that's also got a removable freezer compartment which you can slide out if you don't want to use the fridge space you can also put it on a catch to hold the door partially open so it sits like that and then it just makes sure you minimize the chance of uh, mold growing within the fridge just below the fridge then we've got the cupboard and originally this comes as a wardrobe um, but what I've done, if you've seen the videos, and I've still got a little bit of work to do to finish it off, is I've fitted the coffee machine so it slides out like this, and then that allows me to open the top up and make a cup of coffee. Like so. And you can get into the water behind as well. So, um, Practical and in use, so not done for sure. If you want to have a look around a show one, go and have a look around the dealers. Uh, but we've got various bits and pieces in there. When we go away, you can stock this up quite well and just stack things up. Got the toaster at the back there and rice and various other bits and pieces, including bin bags. We've got the cups there, tend to carry pottery cups. Just, I always think drinks taste better and various bits and pieces there. So we'll pop that away now. So underneath here, we've got some useful storage. You can often put like a bag or whatever in there. We've got the bin there, we can lift out if we need to use that. And I normally store some bottles of water for making the coffee. And I also fitted the uh, light in the cupboard, uh, which just basically works on this switch. So when the door shuts, it turns the light off. We've got the sink here. Now I did have a ball in the sink and uh, you can see it's probably kind of scratched it and marked it a bit with it being stainless steel there. Um, so just a heads up, I now just use a plug in the sink. The settings for control in the van are up here. That's your master power. That's the pump. You can hear it prime up there. Uh, that's the interior light, so we can turn them on and off. And that's the awning light. And these are for checking your levels of your tanks and your battery. This is the control panel for the whale heating. Um, you turn the heating on using this button here and then you can select between gas and electric if you're hooked up and the same with the hot water there. And then you've got the gas level here which is for the gasset tank. So that's the controls there. And we've had a look at the sink. Um, just to the side of the sink uh, there are a number of drawers to keep kind of knives and forks and things like that in there and then various kind of cutlery and uh, various things like that. And then you end up getting more and more into the junk drawers as you move down. There's a handy socket on the edge here and the step control there. Just inside of the cupboard here, um, I put a little bit of um, this kind of padding down just to try and stop things moving around as much. And I've got a hose here which will clip onto the tap. Down here you've got the gas taps as well. You turn them off in this van vertical like that and turn them on horizontally. There is some space to the side here as well which comes in quite handy. Just past that you've got the light switch for the main lights and then one for the washroom light. And then we've got the Thetford triplex cooker. Yeah see in there and get a reasonable amount in there. Um, what I do is I keep a towel on the top that's just to stop anything scratching it if you put things on and then underneath is just this pad which is just to stop things banging around when you're going along. It's got one electric and two gas hobs and then that'll just sit down there and then it just stops it uh, rattling around and then this just stops anything getting scratched on the top. There's some more storage tend to use for pans and plastic bowls and things like that to keep the tea towel on the cooker there and then just below here is where the water for the hot water tank and you just 
that way contains water, that way drops the water. So I'll pop that back and you've got the various pipes into the whale heating system. Probably heard the pump kick in there while I was doing that. And then we've got the washroom. So within here I keep the, see the shower tray there, um, the shower curtain, you've got the um, shower lifts out and then clips up at the top there and you've got a click clack sink there and then various uh, bits. There's some storage in the cupboard here, just keep the uh, toilet fluid and that sort of thing there and it's an electric flush toilet and you need the pump on for that to work and there's where the shower attaches. There's also a roof light above here which you can open up and open up up there and you can also close it like that if you don't want any light coming in there. There's also a light in the washroom which just fits on magnetically and is rechargeable and picks up movement. You can of course put the main light on which I'll show you here but it's very handy if you want to nip to the loo in the night. So that's the washroom. So moving further down, just on the edge of the cooker here, we've got a little extendable worktop and to release that, you just press the button there, that comes up. I did put a bit of padding on there, you can probably see, um, just to stop it rattling. But basically that then allows you to extend and get a bit more room on the uh, worktop. And then when you're finished, just clips down there but that's stopped a lot of the rattle coming from that. We've then, um, kind of following through to the back, replaced the spotlights with ones that have USB. You can turn them off and have a little night light and you can also hold and dim them. Worth noting, some of the people that got spotlights similar didn't have the memory chip in which is a bit of a pain because if you switch off the power and switch it back on the lights always come on with these ones they maintain the last state they were in so just worth noting that if you do get any check to make sure they've got the microchip fitted there's also this security device fitted on the back door which is really handy just to give you that extra peace of mind to make sure nobody opens the back door just got some of these stretch covers as well recently which are quite handy just to help keep any muck off the dog going on the seat. New cushions, just recently, um, pop a link in the description, you can get them personalised but it's not very often you get ones with Fiat on is it? <laughs> in the uh, cupboard up here and uh, pardon the mess, you can get quite a bit of gear in the cupboard as you can see, uh, we've got the um, MiFi for the internet there and also the TV aerial amplifier as well as a little digital TV stick in there and then various of my gadgets and other junk. So that's in the cupboard up there. There is quite a bit of room in the cupboard. There's one with not a lot in at the moment. It's, it's surprising what you can get in. We've had no problem when we've gone away for a couple of weeks and you can always roll your clothes up and then pop it in the uh, cupboards up there. No problem. This model has three on each side. And again, very practical. And we use, uh, we kind of have one each, and then there's one for the dog, one for kind of food stuff, one for electric spit, and kind of a spare one for overflow, basically. So looking back this way now, so we've got the um, we've got the TV here, which is an Avtex connected TV, and then you've got the Avtex soundbar. Um, a few people have asked me what the kind of sound differences between the sound bar and from the TV. Just basically gives a more powerful and deeper bass. It's great for listening to music on and things like that. And you can connect your phone via Bluetooth or whatever else via Bluetooth. There's also a fire stick on the back of the TV as well, which is quite handy for watching programs. That's just one of the Amazon Full HD ones and a little power. So it's powered from the USB on the TV. Just behind the TV, I put this little holder here, which holds the coupler remotes, and also a magnet on the back of the TV to hold the main remote. Hasn't fallen off yet, 
So that's the TV. And then just in the corner there, I replaced the big clock I had with this little weather station. And there's a sensor underneath the van. Um, there's videos on all of these things uh, on the channel. So just have a search through if there's anything of interest there. But that's handy to see what the weather's going to do. Underneath here, we have some storage. We also have the lithium battery set up and you can see the heater outlet there as well. You can open and close these under lockers just with the little buttons there. And then in here, we've got the power distribution unit, little tie from the settee there hanging down, the switch for, to turn the inverter on, the breaker for the inverter, and then the main Eldis distribution unit there. You can also see just behind there, we've got the battery maintainer as well. So inverter on. I also fitted, uh, you probably remember, a couple of um, useful sockets there. So we've got a USB quick charge two ports and one power delivery port. Turn it on and off there and then just cover it. And also a 12 volt outlet. That's been really handy for charging up the MyRider battery. That's that. And then over at the other side, we've just got some storage there keep the little hoover and you'll see the or you might be able to see the basket in the back there um, basically the baskets used to make sure nothing blocks up the air inlet for the space heater which is located under there so up here we've got uh, another storage cupboard pardon the mess and the plug for the microwave there just keep some tea towels in to stop things banging around and we have the microwave there um, and the little bag that holds the plate to stop that nattling around as well. So that's the microwave. There's some storage up here, just tend to keep bedding in it, but uh, you could use it for other purposes. And there's some little shelves just on the back door and on the side door there, just for keeping bits and pieces in. It'd be quite handy for that. On the outside also fitted the wing mirror protectors, fitted the tow bar and fitted the reversing sensors and the mud flaps, just to give a few. Gives you a little bit of a, a quick look round the van. I find it really useful for myself because it gives kind of a point in time and what mods and things are done. So there we go, tour over. Let's get back to the main video. So in summary, I think the main points are, it's a great practical size, both externally and internally, and it works really well for a couple of people. It's quite surprising how big it is actually inside, isn't it? Yeah, it is a little bit of a TARDIS, isn't yeah. it? Secondly, um, I think great value for money, and I'm quoting there what we paid, not necessarily what you would get one for now, because with COVID and all the other things, the price of camper vans, motorhomes and caravans has shot through the roof. What we paid, I thought was cracking value for money. And one of the things that drove to get this particular model, Eldis range, was the value for money, because you would struggle to build it yourself for that price. And finally, it's a fantastic layout for the two of us. But what could be better? What do you think could be better, Rachel? Uh I'd always start with the bathroom, the wash room. I just think the sink in the corner sticks out too far and there's got a shower curtain, so that's probably one that I would say would be my biggest one to change. And it's one we're actually looking to do as a future mod is to kind of convert, I suppose, a washroom into a wet room. Uh, we'll see how we get on with that. The other one comes back to when it was built. I think there's a decent amount of insulation in the roof. There's no insulation behind here, for example. You probably, if you've seen the videos, insulated the back doors, which made a big difference. But I think it would be fantastic to get a bit more insulation in for two reasons. It keeps the heat down in the summer and it keeps the warmth in in the winter. And with the price of energy at the moment, and more and more pitches starting to charge for electric usage, it is super important that your van is well insulated. Otherwise you're having the heater running all the time, which is then costing you and it's wasting 
energy and waste and environmental resources as well so I'd like better insulation. It was amazing when you did those back doors actually the difference of the heat once it was done it was quite astounding to be honest with you. And finally just a few little bits just a little bit of attention to detail here when we got the van the sliding door panel was hanging off part of the problem is they're stuck on with adhesive when the van gets hot the adhesive comes unstuck and then the panel uh, comes away. There were holes already pre-drilled to put a screw in. Simply needed a couple of screws and, and some screw caps on which cost next to nothing. Sorted that one out. Also adding the handle to the door is very helpful so you can pull it open or closed. Probably should be something that comes as standard there. Finally underneath there's um, tank heaters on this particular model. Not all CVs have them but if you've got the winter pack they do have the tank heaters and the cabling on that's open to the elements and especially in the winter when there's salt on the road those end up corroding and then eventually the contacts drop off it would be good to protect those and again if you've watched the previous videos you'll see what I've done there the other one as well remember was the battery wasn't fastened down so that's probably yes. one when you first get your van to Just check to that check. Yes, it's worth doing a good check through everything when, when you get your van. That one wasn't a major one for us, it was just something noticed when we were doing the swap over to the lithium setup. All in all, we're really pleased with the van. If you could turn time back to September 2020 and we went through the process again, knowing what we know now, would we buy an Eldis CV20 again? I would. Yeah. Thank um, you. Yes, definitely. Bits we, 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 we've we kind of covered off there around challenges and things. Most of them are pretty basic things. Uh, we've not come across anything major and fingers crossed we don't. Um, you know, we, we you have a leisure vehicle to relax rather than uh, cause yourself a load of stress with. All in all, really pleased with it. Obviously, we've added things to it, such as the lithium setup, the lights in the cab, many, many other things, as well as accessories and things such as the TV and soundbar, Wi-Fi, the table. table. All of those things, if you're interested in them, check out the mods playlist, which you can have a look through all the different ones there. Without them, I think it's uh, still a very good van. There is an opportunity to enhance the experience, and it was what I'd certainly decided I wanted to do when we got the van, to add things. That was a big deciding factor for you, wasn't it? That yeah. you wanted the base done yeah. so that you could add and personalise yeah. as you wanted. Exactly. And I think it's fair to say you've done that. Well, started. Well, well the, the other piece is, if, you, if you'd have asked me a year ago how much stuff would you actually get done this year, the list would be this long. In reality, it's this long against what I wanted to achieve. That's traded off with spending time away, which is the reason you get the van. But it also means there's a load of things coming up. Is there anything that you wish you could have specified in the van when you ordered it? I think more options on the vehicle. So you could have specified in things such as upgraded safety systems or upgraded uh, radio or whatever so a little bit more choice around the vehicle options I think would have been nice. I think for me it would have been having a choice of the upholstery because having Roxy I would never have probably chosen this colour so that yeah. would have been nice. Would have been nice for a leather choice as well wouldn't it? Yeah. yeah. I think other than that most things uh, without going into a kind of complete personalised option I think more, most things were quite good in the kind of dealer special pack though. If you're looking for one of these I think the dealer specials represent really good value for what you get over and above the base models. So Rachel, what's your favourite thing, your favourite experience about the camper van? I think that it's been, that we've been to some fantastic places and seen some things that I probably wouldn't have seen before. It's been nice getting out and about and going around the place, getting to see Donna and Pete when we went to Scotland. I think it's about that whole, you can finish work, you can jump in it, you can drive somewhere, you can open the doors and you're somewhere different. And it gives you that relaxation and that break away from it. It's just, it's a fantastic feeling. What do you think? So for me, the favourite thing of all, and it only happens in the fair weather, it doesn't happen when it's raining and things like that, for obvious reasons, when you hear what it is. It's the ability to open the back doors yeah. and open the side doors and specifically I think the back doors because you can sit 
or you can lay out and you can just look out and watch the world go by but you've somehow brought the outside in or if you sat outside with the doors open you bring the inside out whatever your perspective is on that i think there's just something magical about that or either even just sat in the front with the sliding door open it's great to open both because it just just kind of really opens things up and that's been something mm. i didn't really expect having used to have a motorhome where none of that was possible but there is something magical yeah. happens for us when you do that and we've, we've got some great memories where we've done remember that remember the view at castle rick hall with the the doors off it was stunning yeah. the other bit you touched on as well which is we've met some fantastic people yeah. and it surprised me because just thinking about it there's so many people we've met that we would have never met it's been an amazing year the van's powered that. It's opened up a, a range of new experiences. And whatever make or model, there's some magic happens if you get out there and use it. I think it's a community, isn't it? It's yeah. people with camper vans, motorhomes, etc. Yeah. I just think everybody's yeah. such a friendly bunch. Yeah. It's been great. Yeah. If you're thinking of getting a camper van, a motorhome or a caravan, there is something magical about it that goes well beyond any van. And I also think the other bit that's nice is you get people that have built a van, you get people that have bought a van, you get people that you think have won the lottery because of the type of van they have. Everyone just gets along. That's really nice because irrespective of whether you've paid £500 for your van or £5 million for your van, you're going to the same place and you're getting the same view cracking where you can go and we are really looking forward to 2023 our first trips are what's our, our first main one rachel is it the first main thing that we've got booked is the harrogate show again because we really enjoy that and it sets us off for the season so we'll be going there following that in april we've got the peterborough show we thought we'd try the national this time for a little bit of a change and probably call in some sites on the way down and the way back to that one we thought that would be a nice little tour around i'm actually going with david this year to van love fest as well i'm yes. looking forward to that <laughs> that's me in the silent yeah. disco by the way yeah. so we've got van love fest probably do whitby again we really enjoyed yeah. that one but what we're going to try and do then is just kind of mix it up a bit we've got our weekends away and again i think we've said to you guys in the past probably peak district lake district and north wales we'd, we'd like to do this year but who knows where we'll end up and that's the magic of it thank you for watching hope you've enjoyed it and i hope you found it useful too and we'll catch you on the next one Bye. Bye.